And sometimes, just sometimes, we have people that are as cool as our next speaker. So I personally, I mean, professional detachment aside, I have been waiting for this talk all day. I'm so excited I have the chance to host our next coming speaker. So we are joined live by Dr. Blortzeg Minjin. She is a legend. Her work has been featured in The Atlantic, National Geographic, TED. She has recently been named one of the Explorers Club Top 50 People Changing the World that you need to know about. And so we are so thrilled today to have her here so that you get that chance to know about her and her amazing work protecting Mongolia's fossil heritage, building up a whole, she, she's built up a whole thing from nothing uh, and, and done really incredible work to highlight one of the most incredible fossil regions of the globe, uh, make it a tourist attraction, make it a research hub. Uh, she is a legend. So I'm so excited to have her here with us today. I hope you guys are equally keen. And so Dr. Minjin, thank you so much for joining us today. If you want to unmute your microphone, we'll hopefully get that great internet connection and uh, take us away. Thank you so much for coming in today. Yes, well, thank you, Jesse. That is a really nice uh, introduction. And um, I'm really excited to be here. And um, so let me um, set my presentation. Uh, let me share my screen. Just a few minutes, uh, I mean, a few seconds. Okay, can you, see, uh, can you see it okay? We're getting it up right now. It, it's it's in, but it's it's buffering. It's going slowly. There we go. It's up. We're perfect. <laughs> okay, great. Well, thank you, Jesse. Uh, Jesse. So, uh, so today I'm going to talk about uh, preserving Mongolia's fossil heritage. This is the work I've been working for the last twenty years. Um, so I'm Mongolian paleontologist. Um, so, let me start the story from uh, this picture. Um, this picture I found when I was maybe around middle school in my family album. So I saw a bunch of these foreign looking people, you know, sitting uh, with some Mongolians and Chinese. Um, so I didn't know what was this picture was about at the time. Uh, I assumed these people were Russian people, European looking people. So. Back when I, um, growing up in my childhood at times, I grew up, um, Mongolia uh, used to be a socialist country. So mostly, um, so, so we were really like a second country to become a socialist country after Soviet Union. So we had very close connection with Russia. So, and so, you know, I assume these people were Russians, but then I actually, um, Killed that picture off my family album and see there's my father's handwriting, some language I didn't know back then. So um, I eventually find out and from my father who, um, it, who was a paleontologist. So he told me that these people were actually from um, American Museum of Natural History. And that was a picture that you were looking at before is a team of scientists, uh, it's a Central Asiatic expeditions, went to Mongolia about 100 years ago. Um, so this expedition actually made uh, very important discoveries uh, in Mongolia, not only uh, in Mongolia, I mean, discoveries were also important for the world. So they found first dinosaur nest in, in, the, in the world. So since then, you know, people learned that dinosaurs laid eggs. Um, so not only uh, these discoveries, um, uh, these scientists found um, uh, new dinosaur uh, species new to science, including the um, dinosaur skull you see here is a Velociraptor, also known as a raptor. Probably most of you know children would know from Jurassic Park movie. So well, and then. Um, since then, uh, there were a number of expeditions I actually worked in Mongolia looking for dinosaur fossils. Uh, they were mostly from uh, Russia and Poland. And so 1960s, our country's first uh, paleontologist that were trained in Russia. So my father, uh, who's standing in front of University of Moscow, uh, he was one of uh, first generation of Mongolian paleontologists um, trained in Russia. So growing up, so I went to my uh, father's office and this is the picture of his office that you can see pictures of, you know, these prehistoric animals and some sculptures of, you know, mammoths and dinosaurs and, you know, all different 
pictures for me it seemed so foreign that you know growing up in cities things and i you know i i know my father uh, i knew back then uh, my father was teaching in university but i didn't really know about paleontology so much back then so we had um natural history museum and there is a you know small hall has this um a uh, meat-eating dinosaur called Tarposaurus Batara being displayed. And this is the museum in this small hall being visited by uh, children uh, in the city. Um, so I grew up seeing this uh, exhibit and you can see the dinosaur dragging its tail. It was displayed just like this till uh, 2013. So the museum had a very uh, bad structural problem and it's been closed since then. Now it's in the process of getting new building in Mongolia for this natural history museum. So, um, you can see uh, uh, the capital city is Ulaanbaatar in the north, northern part of Mongolia. And most of uh, Mongolian uh, dinosaur fossils have been found in south part of Mongolia. It's a Gobi Desert. Flaming Cliffs is the uh, fossil site, which is very um, well known. It's found by a scientist from American Museum of Natural History in 1920s. So since then, uh, there were a number of new um, uh, fossil sites been discovered in this region. Um, so if I can show you some pictures, how beautiful is this area? You can see exposures been exposed in whole valley that we, you know, do uh, expeditions to look for dinosaur fossils here. So like my interest in paleontology really didn't come till I really went to college. And so I'm interested in um, you know, learning more about paleontology. My father was the only paleontology professor at that university. Um, and for me, it was hard to find advisor to do my master's. I wanted to go more graduate school. So my father ended up being my master's advisor. And so I did my uh, work on uh, fossil corals. Um, so the thing actually changed uh, when I started joining um, this uh, uh, paleontology expedition run by American Museum of Natural History. This expedition started going back to Mongolia in 1990s. Mongolia opened to Western countries that uh, foreign scientists, uh, Western scientists invited to back to Mongolia to work. So I had a fortunate, you know, um, I, I was able to uh, join this expedition. Actually, initially I joined as a cook. My father joined as a geologist and helping them out to make a, a geology map for the fossil sites. Um, but then, you know, I really didn't want to uh, do a, you know, cook. So I instead uh, joined this American scientist. This is like a first Americans I've seen um, back then, um, you know, since Mongolia opened to, uh, you know, Western uh, countries. So here we digging uh, some uh, big dinosaur um, fossils out in the Gobi Desert. And um, there's a number of uh, beautiful uh, fossils, uh, dinosaur fossils, and I mean, most, you know, vertebrate fossils been found in Mongolia. Just a few examples to show here is it's a beautifully complete skeleton of lizard. And you can see baby um, horned dinosaur called a protoceratops. And there's a couple of these two dinosaurs, uh, toothless dinosaurs uh, called Han Mikana. Uh, it's a uh, oviraptor, uh, it's kind of like ostrich looking kind of two dinosaurs being found together in one place. Um, so it's a beautifully preserved, um, uh, you know, fossils been found from Mongolia. And upper left side is a, a mammal. Um, it's called uh, multi-tuberculid. It's an extinct group of mammal. And uh, it dated is 80 million years old. So I worked on my uh, research, I mean, uh, PhD on um, focusing on this mammal. And this superficially looks like um, rodent. It has enlarged incisor. And, but the name came from in this back part of the, the smaller, the teeth has multiple cups. So that's the name it came from, you know, multi tuberculate. So it's a beautifully complete skeleton, you know, for fossils, really hard to find like these well preserved um, uh, skeletons, usually you find the teeth and claws. 
So it's incredibly, you know, beautifully preserved fossils that we find in Mongolia. So right after I finished my PhD, um, I established an organization called Institute for the Study of Mongolian Dinosaurs. Um, so the reason I uh, started this organization is um, back in my home, um, so I actually did my PhD in New York um, at the American Museum of Natural History. So after I finished, uh, we were facing this uh, poaching and looting problem, fossil, um, dinosaur fossils being poached and looted, and then uh, were selling in the black market, eventually went to a public auction, like a big major auction houses. And the, the, uh, the, the major breakthroughs came through in like 2012, um, uh, this dinosaur called Turbosaurus Batar was going to be auctioned in heritage auctions in New York City. So I alarmed the uh, Mongolian president's office about this sale. We had to stop this sale because this dinosaur was, um, I mean, uh, the, before this, there were some number of uh, Mongolian fossils being sold on auctions and even eBay and, you know, all this public uh, auction uh, house in places. So um, it was like a year battle. We trying to get this dinosaur, uh, you know, to stop the stop the auction and bring back to bring the fossil back to Mongolia. So just give you a little background. Tarbosaurus batar is a cousin of T. Rex in terms of size. It's a little small, but it's pretty much kind of similar. The difference you can see is the probably the skull part. You can see how bucky is. T-Rex would look, and then Herbosaur skull, just, you know, visually, you can see nice and slender skull it has. So, um, so that, you know, um, this uh, auction house, heritage auction house, was going to sell this dinosaur, so we were able to stop it, and Mongolian presidents involved, and then also U.S. government started to involve in this case, and, and then uh, after year of battle to get this dinosaur, we eventually were able to get the fossil. And so I'm putting some numbers on this um, dinosaur uh, uh, bone that uh, the, the Tarbosaurus batar uh, bones, uh, skeletons, and to getting it ready to ship it back to Mongolia. So since then, uh, since 2012, so last seven, eight years, um, so I've been focusing on this dinosaur, dinosaur repatriation, working with um, uh, Homeland Security, U.S. Attorney Office, and of course, Mongolian government. And so you can see from these pictures, like number, enormous number of fossils being um, uh, poached and stolen from Mongolia. And so we're lucky to get only this small part. There are, you know, other parts. There are some more that um, we haven't been returned. I mean, uh, it's it's been sold on the auction houses and black markets. And so, I mean, you can see some of fossils still in a plaster field jacket. And by size, it's actually quite large uh, dinosaur. Um, so um, with this, um, you know, cases going on that uh, some of well-known uh, people involved also purchasing uh, Mongolian dinosaurs from auction house. And this is one of the example that you can see it, it, it uh, the story came out on New York Times. Um, so this is the skull that um, uh, this art uh, actor, Nicholas Cage was purchased and owning. So now just a year ago, I had an opportunity to, to exempt, to bring it back to Mongolia. Um, so I think, um, this, you know, why we're having this problem and issues and, you know, uh, when, when I, you know, uh, work it in my uh, home country in the Gobi Desert, especially communities, they have a very limited knowledge about um, our fossil heritage and dinosaur fossils. And these are kids you see on this picture. These are kids actually live right next to the fossil site, uh, Flaming Cliffs, the site that discovered 100 years ago by American Museum of Natural History scientists. So I'm bringing those kids in the same place and where this discovery has been made and teaching them about 
their backyard has amazing um, fossil um, that we can find and ma amazing discoveries being made. Some of these kids, you know, at the time didn't know even dinosaurs existed. They were basically uh, like thinking they were like a dragons, you know, and some even didn't know dinosaurs existed. So it was very challenging to work with the communities that to bring this knowledge back to my country that all these hundred years of discovery has been happening in Mongolia. Unfortunately, those communities and um, Mongolians were the people last to know, um, even they still don't know. Um, so, so we actively going around schools and, um, you know, uh, across the country, for example, we have this movable dinosaur museum that we bring all across the country and bring in the kids to um, this, uh, this movable museum, teaching them about the um, dinosaur heritage in, in, in our country. So we've been most of the area of the country. We have 22 regions. And so this uh, summer, we're planning to go to Western part of Mongolia, uh, these three regions. It's really challenging some of regions that we cannot reach with paved roads. So we're waiting some roads get built. Um, so because we couldn't drive this bus off road. Um, so inside the museum has um, some fossil, uh, uh, dinosaur fossils been found from Mongolia. A cast, we, we use a cast of uh, real fossils. And um, so all different activities. So this is really exciting for kids. Some kids never been even museums because we go to the small towns, don't have any museums. And so we're working closely with uh, small local town teachers, um, um, then bringing them to fossil sites to teach them about importance. We, you know, studying these from more educational organizations through that they te these teachers can help us to, um, you know, spread the knowledge to kids and publics. Um, so most importantly, we're focusing on, um, uh, you know, next generation of Mongolian paleontologists. So we have uh, started this program 2018, and now we have over 20 kids from uh, local towns in the Gobi Desert. And we started with these four uh, children, uh, uh, student from middle and high school. So these students uh, live right next to the fossil site. Uh, they are, you know, uh, their parents are nomads, um, so they never, you know, seen the fo fossils that found from their backyard. So we were, you know, had opportunity to bring them to New York at the American Museum of Natural History, where our first dinosaur fossils being stored um, for a hundred year. And so these are kids first to go see um, these fossils discovered hundred year ago in person. So you can see. Bottom right side is the skull of Velociraptor that's been first found 100 years ago. The first specimen that is named is the Velociraptor. So these kids were really excited to see um, uh, this um, dinosaur. So the so now we're training uh, next generation of paleontologists. So it's really important for them to have place to work. So we're creating, um, working on a Gobi Dinosaur Museum. It's a community-based museum uh, where um, our first dinosaur fossil has been discovered uh, in the Gobi uh, Flaming Cliffs. Uh, this is the view you see. Um, so, with uh, this museum, so we have a vision that to become an internationally recognized dinosaur museum that places the hopes, dreams, and future of the local community first. So our mission is to engage the communities of Gobi Desert to protect and preserve the dinosaurs of Mongolia, to support these communities through development of sustainable dinosaur tourism, and to share fossil discoveries of the region with the rest of the world. So. So we really, you know, want to empower the local communities. They, the people should be, um, you know, be part of this discovery along the side of, you know, scientists. And um, so, so that's why we, you know, think for solution of this poaching and, uh, you know, stealing uh, fossils, um, you know, some way education is the solution that we can fight with to reduce and to stop. And thank you um, for 
for your attention. So, um, so basically, that's what I can share about my work. My jaw has been on the floor this entire presentation. Basically, every time there's a challenge that to most people would seem insurmountable, you just go and do it. You're building a museum. You've got a mobile dinosaur museum. You're bringing fossils back from around the world. You're, you're getting internationally lauded for your work. Uh, Dr. Minjit, that was amazing. Um, oh, what a fun presentation. Oh, so, thank you. So what is next for this area? I mean, you, you're you inspiring this whole new generation of paleontologists that are gonna continue on your legacy of work and, and discover so much more. You showed these fossils that are just incredible. No one finds fossils like that. That idea of a fossil that's fully articulated is so rare in paleontology. So what are we finding in Mongolia nowadays? And where, I mean, there must be so much more to discover and so many more places to look. So what's the situation there? Yes, I mean, discoveries are still um, happening. And so most important thing is we really need to work with the community. So what's happening is most of these fossil sites are quite in remote areas, away from towns and, you know, cities. Uh, so protecting and preserving sites is really important. So local communities are most closest and they know the area. And so I think we wanted to involve them in part of, you know, this protecting fossils on site. So this community-based museum is actually a um, work in progress. Uh, so hopefully maybe two, three years, we will have some museum right at the Gobi Desert that close to the site that we involve in community making discoveries with them. And, you know, the next generation of um, young people to involve with that. And so there's many discoveries happening as we speak. It's, mm -hmm. it's always something new, dinosaur and new species being found in Mongolia yeah. and everywhere in the world. It's true. I mean, it's it's one of the, when I was a kid, I was obsessed with dinosaurs and there's been more dinosaur discoveries in the last five years or so all over the place in the world. It's such an exciting time to be a paleontologist. So again, uh, kudos to you, such neat stuff. I guess if, if people wanted to find out more about dinosaurs being found, could they go to the Mongolian dinosaurs website that you shared? Is, is there current stuff being added there? Yeah, well, uh, current our focus currently, um, uh, focusing on education and um, so in terms of science uh, now we really wanted to get this community-based museum being built and this museum will have a uh, research going on expeditions we will be running and so yeah so if you go to our website you will be keep informed what's going on and a lot of exciting things will happen coming years yeah. so we will posting on our website yes right. please follow us I certainly will. I'm so excited to do so. So you, you shared these incredible images of all the kids coming onto the mobile site, coming with you guys into the field. Is there any particular story when you're when you're working with children or, or even young adults where someone, you know, it clicked for them because of your efforts. They really now they're inspired by dinosaurs. Now they're excited to go into the field. Do you have any story like that to share with us? I'd love to hear a personal tale from you. Yeah, no, I think uh, for kids, it's always interesting. They have a very good questions yeah. and always we have to think, oh, right. OK, why we never thought of that kind of thoughts. They their questions come up. Right. So um, so with uh, the kids that we're working in the community, um, they um, I mean, you know, initially when we meet them, they didn't know about dinosaurs at all. So we doing all you know lectures and activities with them. Once they really got into it, they really um, interested in you know going more further more. So we have some number of kids um, like especially going into I mean in the high school want to be paleontologists. So now we're going on a level to give them some career uh, advising. And of course we have a partners we work in the in the states like. Uh, our paleontology museum been very supportive of our, our project and having our students to come to the States to give more experience. Um, yeah, so, I mean, the thing that um, when I first started doing uh, the educational project with the kids, you know, when I ask about dinosaurs, they often would say, oh, dragons and all. Yeah. Or some city kids seen uh, dinosaur movies and you know, shows on TV, but they would say like, 
oh, we thought dinosaurs were only found in America. Yeah. And so wonder why, because the shows they sing and watching all in English. Yeah. And, you know, um, so they assumed dinosaurs were found in America. So I said, no, dinosaurs are actually found from Mongolia. Yeah. So I think for us is the challenging part is to developing a curriculum and some, you know, uh, teaching in own language. I think that is the part that we, you know, focusing on it because some of the words and terms that we use in paleontology doesn't exist in Mongolia, in Mongolian language. So it's, you know, um, because we didn't have such tradition of, in terms of, you know, um, uh, teaching kids about dinosaurs, uh, it's just starting through our organization. So it's new thing. So we basically starting, starting scratch in, in our country. Um, to teach this science education in terms of paleontology to kids, um, you know, yeah, like terms we don't have. So we have to find something new or have to explain a really, really long <laughs> way to explain them what is it, you know. Uh, some people even don't know, um, you know, paleontology. Um, so we have to explain. Talk about building something from the ground up. It's just, again, it's such an incredible story. I first heard about you, and I'd encourage our audience to check into this as well. So you only got to talk about it a little bit today. I know we've got limited time for the presentation, but I know you're featured in The Dinosaur Artist, which is a fantastic popular science book. So if you want to hear more about uh, Dr. Minjin's story and all the incredible work she did to bring back this fossil heritage, make this, uh, uh, again, build up this incredible story um, from such limited roots, uh, check out that book. It's a really, really great read. Um, and then mongoliandinosaurs.org. I, I have one more question before we wrap up. I, I would go, I would talk to you all day long. Um, if I want to donate, and I do, I, I want to finish this broadcast and I want to contribute to your efforts. Can I do that at the Mongolian Dinosaurs website? Or is there a way that I can help support the building of this museum and the work that you're doing personally? Where can I go? <laughs> yes, I mean, our organization is based in an uh, actually registered in US, it's 51C3. Uh, yeah. um, on the website currently, we're not accepting donation right now. We, uh, we're soon going to do some fundraising projects specifically on our uh, museum project. And that will be posted on our website very soon. Then, um, yeah, please follow our website and information uh, will be posted there. Lovely. I cannot wait. You can have all my money. I'm, I'm so excited to contribute. And I'm just, it's such an honor and thrill to get the chance to chat with you today. Um, our audience, just such a treat for everyone tuning in on Facebook, on YouTube. So thank you guys for our audience as well. And Dr. Minjin, uh, I really appreciate the time you share with us today. And thank you so much for uh, almost ending off our second day on our, our, our Women's Fest. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Yes, well, thank you, Jesse. This has been quite a um, um, nice, you know, experience in sharing our story. And thank you for having me. Thank you so, so much. I'll leave you to your weekend. Have a wonderful weekend. Keep up the great work. I, I think this is the least productive 30 minutes you've ever had in the last 10 years. So I'll leave you to get back and inspire uh, the community. Um, and we'll wish you a wonderful rest of your day. So bye, Dr. Yeah.